Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is a public affairs show uh, here at Amherst Media and it's co-sponsored by the Amherst League of Women Voters. And we're continuing our journey together to understand how our new town council and our new form of government is working here in Amherst. And also from time to time we'll have our newly elected state legislators come by as well. Uh, tonight we're going to be focusing on the bylaw review process which has had quite a history already and it's been a very very short time our government is less than four months old right. and prior to that uh, the uh, interim if you will or acting by law review committee did some work over the summer and we have with us as our guest this evening the chair of the Amherst bylaw review committee and he served as the interim chair or the chair of the temporary committee whatever you want to call it and now he's once again taken up that uh, mantle. And we also have Pat DeAngelis, uh, one of our town councilors, who is a member of the Goal Committee, Governance, Organization, and Legislation. And she sits on the committee with Bob Ritchie. And so we want to talk a little bit now and get up to speed. So let's start at the very beginning. If there's a, that's an opening line of a song I once heard. <laughs> So let's I'm see. A few bars, at the, <laughs> there we go. Um, so let's see. Uh, the charter required that the bylaws be reviewed, and our town uh, manager appointed you for round one. Tell me about round one. Well, round one lasted for about seven months, and it consisted of a committee of three people: myself, uh, uh, Bernie Kubiak, and uh, and uh, Ken Hogreaves at the last. Kay Moran was on it initially. And then we worked for, for, uh, for uh, about seven months and made a report to the elect, council elect and then the, the council. Uh, the charter does call for that committee to convene and operate. And after submitting its report to the council elect, we stood aside and waited for the appointment of the follow-up committee, which has got the same name, uh, the same charge. Uh, it's just round two, as you put it. Now it's a committee of five. Okay. And its purpose and focus based on the Charter's dictate is? Basically to bring our code of laws, the general bylaws and the zoning bylaws, into conformance with the new form of government. They were written at a time when our legislative uh, body was a town meeting and bylaws were adopted uh, periodically from time to time, assembled without any particular order and collected and published that way. Uh, now we have to change the names of the public officials right. and multiple member bodies who are different under the new form of governance. Some provisions of the old laws referred to entities that no longer exist and those provisions had to be deleted. And, and basically it, it to uh, render it conformity with the charter and to fully implement the charter to, to take this document and let it fit like a good set of clothes to the new form of government. Oh, that's a beautiful way of putting that. Mm -hmm. So, Pat, as I understand it, you wanted to be on this committee. Yes. <laughs> Why did you want to be on this committee? What was attractive about it to you? Well, for a couple of things. One, I'm a novice uh, at this whole thing. I've been in government really now four months. Um, and I thought... Although you did do some stuff earlier the with the town meeting yeah. and you worked on some bylaws yeah, and some I, things um, of yeah. that nature. Yeah, which, yeah but, uh, but for all intents and purposes, the, you're new to the new government. Yeah, and I felt like looking at bylaws um, minutely um, would help me understand how to construct them because that, I think, is part of my job is to take what we um, understand about good law and create that in our town. So I wanted to know how to do that. Also, what got me involved in any kind of town government was the creation of the sanctuary bylaw. I had gotten involved with uh, Amherst Sanctuary folks, and we got together and we worked on this bylaw, and um, then we brought it to the select board at that time, and we were all like so incredibly nervous um, about what we were doing, and you know we weren't sure even during the questioning whether it was going well. And then the chief of police um, brought up an issue. Uh, there was one section where if an officer stopped uh, someone in their vehicle, um, 
what could or should they do and we had written that they shall provide them an opportunity to be picked up and driven home etc uh, and the uh, chief of police this was a, a may shell mm -hmm. argument <laughs> Um, and what he uh, was explain saying, what that means because some of our viewers may uh, not be familiar with that idea. Okay. Well, generally speaking, if a law is written as must or shall, and preferably shall in Massachusetts, that means it must be enforced in that way. No choice by no the choice. agency that's, that's supposed right. to enforce that, it. There, you know, and that's how we had written this particular section. Um, and it was the only se the other sections also had shall, but he wasn't bothered by that. But what he was saying was that an officer, whether she, when she stops someone, really needs to use her own judgment about what's happening. Uh, if she has time, she might wait with the person until their ride comes mm -hmm. or bring them to a parking area. So this one little word mm -hmm. got, the, I really feel like it got the bylaw passed. And we were there, uh, the people who were presenting came over and were, you know, huddling in, in our seats talking about, yes, yeah, we'll do this, we'll do this. And uh, I, I think that in really intrigued me about, the, about bylaws, about, you know, the minuteness or how do you create clarity mm -hmm. um, and how do you create positive flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, so that was important to me. And then I went on town meeting and helped get the bylaw passed, the sanctuary bylaw. And that really hooked me into town government. So and you understood through that experience the, how critical the proper wording is yeah. mm -hmm. to getting first the intent very clear yeah, right. and then secondly to you know prescribe the parameters right. big difference between may and shall it's only yeah. a four letter word right. excuse yeah. me one two three four five letter word <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a three Many letter said, word hey, but and but that is yeah. so mm -hmm. and critical. that's not how i was thinking beforehand you know right. and i really uh I don't know if I did it then, but I really congratulate the chief on sticking to his guns, very bad pun, uh, not intended, um, and really fighting for that because an officer does need discretion. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I think we can tr generally trust the police yeah, in Amherst. Yeah. So um, some people might say, well, if you did it once, why are you doing it again? I mean, mm -hmm. what what you described earlier was that as soon as the charter passed, the town manager appointed this committee because it was consistent with the charge of the charter uh, and you went through a process you reviewed everything that was there why do you have to do it a second time well now you know <laughs> now you know why i'm so happy pat is on the second committee <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have the house rough framed in the first round ah. and then you finish the siding and you figure out the trim and the color yeah. and having somebody with pat's attention to detail gives us second go at this text mm -hmm. <clears throat> the kind of breadth and scope that we wanted to have yeah. the the first the first product w was a was a rough cut at what we need to do now we're going back and make sure that all the pieces fit together pat's attention to the fine details of speech we render the entire new code consistent so that if we use a word once with one meaning you don't come up with another word for the same thing so not only does the new code have to be consistent with the laws of the Commonwealth and the, the Charter, but it also, within itself, it has to be consistent in the way it does things. Yeah. So we come up with the, a consistent use of words uh, and uh, fewer of them when possible uh, okay. to achieve the same To create meaning. clarity. Right. To make to it readable, make it to make it clear. precise yeah. and clear. Right. Pat, you were about to say something a second well, ago. Well, he keeps talking about, well, the first. We started the second committee with their sixth iteration of wow. review and that blew me away because wow. they had already gone through it six times and yet we're still I think now n we're coming up less we move fairly quickly usually mm -hmm. but I think what we're coming up with is maybe philosophical differences with something that says or who's really in trouble whose jurisdiction is this and things mm -hmm. like yes. that and so that there is where we're calling things to go to the town lawyers and also when we present to town council We'll be sharing those issues because hopefully we're going to move forward uh, with them and accept them but we're going to look at these other things the other bylaws that we're questioning mm -hmm. um, and i i'm kind of excited about that part you know great so. and uh, bob you uh, you were uh, in your years you have worn many hats mm -hmm. 
we learned just before the show that you were a commercial photographer and built your own camera. Yes. Well, that's a conversation for another day, perhaps over a bourbon or two. But the question I want to ask you is, in, in your service as a municipal attorney, which you did for a period of time, um, help us understand the difference between bylaws, ordinances, and anything else that you may be looking at, perhaps rules. What, what are the differences, what are these different tools in municipal government about? Well, first of all, bylaws and ordinances are really two names for the same thing. Okay. Ordinances is a noun that is uh, associated typically with cities, bylaws typically with towns. There's nothing written in the Constitution or the state statutes that call for that. It's just a tradition which has had its purpose. Uh, the bylaws themselves uh, are the, uh, the source of law that are then implemented by regulations that implement uh, so that. You could substitute the word law at the municipal yes. level for bylaw. Right. So when we yes. hear about bylaws, we're hearing about the laws of the town. The laws of the town. Okay. Which, which have to be consistent with the charter of the town, there which is go. our mission. And to the make charter sure that is the, uh, effectively the constitution, the constitution of the town? Right. Okay. So our bylaws, both general and zoning, have to have consistency or non-inconsistency with the constitution of the Commonwealth, the statutes of the Commonwealth, the charter of the town, and the policies of, of the town. Okay. And so we have this hierarchy of law that go all the way down to regulations below bylaws and policies below right. them. And who makes regulations? The regulations are made by the body that is authorized to do so. So if a bylaw... Who? who authorizes them? Well, in statutes new, authorize them. How about in our new town of government form? Well, the, our legislative body, which is the council, uh -huh. will okay. do that. So the council passes a law and passes on the responsibility to create the details of implementation and regulation right. to the town manager and his staff. Right, and they have to be within the scope of the, of the law under which they yeah. are promulgated. Okay, so that's interesting to see that progression yeah. of yeah. who makes the decision, and they may, not make, uh, they may not decide every detail. They may create the framework, which is the law, but then they pass it on to another body of the government who are accountable to the council, and the council accountable right. to the town. Yeah, and like with the tobacco. To the people of the town. Ta yeah. Tobacco usage, yeah. uh, that involves the Board of Health, and, uh, and who else? Uh, I forget right now. But, uh, the but those, part, and the, the police, police department, department yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're the bodies that do that, and pay, that's sort of okay. their jurisdiction. This touches on an important boundary that sets the outer scope of our committee's charge. Uh, we have to be sensitive to uh, wh where is the source of the authority, for example. It is the prerogative of the council to establish policy, for example. Yeah. So if we come across a provision of the bylaws that uh, could be resolved in one or two or three different ways, and it's going to be driven by policy, our committee needs to stand back from that and, and bring it forward so that the policy level right. is implemented by our legislative body mm -hmm. and not our committee. We try to stay faithful to what has been done in the past. Right. And when you're saying stay faithful to what has been done in the past, that reminds us that the bylaws and that you're working with now were adopted by another form of legislative right. body, our town meeting. Yep. But just because the town meeting was dissolved does not m mean that all the work that was done generation right. after generation by that town meeting is dissolved. All of those laws remain in place right. until and unless the town council repeals them, amends them, right. or whatever. Exactly. So uh, w uh, within the scope of what you're doing, um, do you have the right to change any of what's on the document that you're reading? What if you come across something uh, that you say, <laughs> gee, this doesn't make sense anymore? And it might be that you just disagree with it, but it also might be that this was done 40 years ago, and it doesn't make sense today. Can you change it? That's a good question. Uh, we're charged with not doing anything. We're just advising. <laughs> uh, but we, well, you've well, been doing a lot of nothing, man, haven't you? When we, when we, when we do nothing, uh, what we are preparing to do is to make recommendations to right. the legislative body. 
So we see something that begs to be deleted. Uh, we will delete it and explain when we make a recommendation to the council that uh, you will see that this is on the books today. We are recommending deleting it because that is bringing us into conformance with the charter and implementing the new charter as we have been charged to recommend. But you didn't actually delete no, it. No, You're no, making no, no, a no. recommendation that exactly. they should consider right. to delete it. Pat mentioned the six iterations that we went to make the, yeah. the document that we're working with. And one of the things that we took care to do is to create an audit trail of everything we did. Right. So we take the, the bylaws that we have now the next level was the same bylaws with a few obvious deletions, like the town meeting procedures. The next thing, the next iteration would be changing town manager uh, to, let's say, license commissioning or the select board to councilors. We made that change. And, and then we, we brought it into a new framework. Think of the bylaws of the town of Amherst uh, being a collection of uh, pieces of a mosaic. Each mm -hmm. one was defined and written as if it were an isolation of the rest. Right. What we are trying to do is to bring this mosaic into something that makes a picture. And, and, and the pieces now fit together so that the code as a whole uh, doesn't take the, the, the sanctuary bylaw, this other bylaw, the dog bylaw, the tobacco bylaw, each written at different times with different language rendering some harmony in the way we express ourselves and then to express the same thing town meeting expressed in one way but bringing it in so that all of our expressions legislative expressions are similar and and consistent, consistent and understandable right. but so, still yeah. the council will review that we'll and, and make look those at, decisions and make those decisions right. so everything we're doing is really like you said recommendation it's such and an I, interesting I think that's yeah. important it's one yeah. of the i think unanticipated results of, of a, a changing the form of yeah. government and creating the new charter. Because as a former legislator, I can tell you that all of the laws are in silos. These go back 300 years. And every so often, uh, people uh, come in and file pieces of legislation to clean those things up. Mm -hmm. They never get taken up. Right. So I mean, <laughs> you can still go to jail for spitting on the sidewalk. I didn't do it. I and wonder if we could get rid it. of the president. That might, and I don't oh, mean men. No. <laughs> That's <laughs> going to another <laughs> level of government. The so, legislature, Stan, had House and Senate Council that yeah. had a last look at, at bylaws. We don't have anything like that. Right. Right. We have, as a committee, used the state-style, uh, legislative-style manual as, as our main guide. Mm -hmm. And we try to stay consistent with it. And we are trying, as a committee, to do what House and Senate Council does with state legislation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and bring that kind of level harmony so that state statutes go on the books, that there is, a, there is a close family resemblance from one to the next, even though they say different things. And when you finish this exercise, you yeah. will have a document that goes to the council. Yeah. Where is it going to land? On whose desk, Pat? Well, initially it will come to the council, but I'm sure, uh, because we're going to have to look at the recommendations, uh, we'll also probably send it to the government organization and legisla governance organization and legislative let us legislative committee to really look at it to make sure that the bylaws as they're now uh, written and collected are uh, actionable they're clear and they're consistent but there's also um, we need to look at all of this thing all of this and share with the town council and have council members other than us also share philosophical issues, uh, legalistic issues, things that we really need to look at. Um, and mm -hmm. that needs that will be brought forward um, after that decision. So it, in a sense, it goes back. It comes to the council, moves slightly away, and returns. And that mm -hmm. return is critical. One of the things I was talking to Alyssa Brewer, and one of the and things... And she's also on this committee, yes, along yeah. with Evan Ross. Yes. So there are three councilors right. on this committee that Bob is chairing. That's yes. very important because it means three members of the council out of the 13 are already processing every decision that's being that's made. Right. And that's every, right. Excuse me, every recommendation that's right. being made in this process. Right. So that's an important right. thing. And, and Alyssa suggested an, a further move beyond the council in a certain sense. Um, is that after we look, begin to look at it, that we create a couple of working sessions 
that maybe includes a subset of counselors who haven't worked on the bylaws mm -hmm. and uh, residents who are feeling passionately about certain things or entities like the ACLU if we wanted to look at signage and or usage of the common and things like that so that we're bringing those folks together to really look at the bylaws mm -hmm. um, and and hopefully really getting people curious um, I think I'm hoping this show will bring some people to our meetings mm -hmm. to see what we're doing but that that curiosity or looking in depth at what you maybe glanced at or haven't looked at before mm -hmm. I think it would be incredibly beneficial to get all that energy and information and thinking from across this right. spectrum of people and then look at what what are we going to change what will we legislate what will we you know there, there are certain bylaws that will just be accepted as is but what are these other issues mm -hmm. and I, I think it's important that we bring it out to residents in the town and, and uh, entities like ACLU because um, we need fresh eyes on who we are as a town how we operate as a town and, um, I don't know. and this is all this tied way. to the fact that that the charter requires that the bylaws be right. reviewed and it's right. we're now in the second iteration although the sixth draft no you're working on the seventh draft <laughs> right now okay and uh, you've got three counselors on the committee it's likely to go to goal governance mm -hmm. organization and legislation you're on that committee. The other four are not on. Evan's on that committee Evan, as well. So, yeah. so there are going to be three more committee right. uh, counselors. Right. So six of the counselors out of the 13 will have worked on these mm -hmm. by the time it goes back to the council right. for a vote. And you're saying that there might be one other step in yeah. between. Because if we can get other people you know, residents uh, to yeah. also work on them with us mm -hmm. when we go to, and then if there is something that we really need right. to change because philosophically it doesn't fit with the values that we yeah. have in Amherst, that that would be an easier shift and move. And it gives, mm -hmm. it gives voice to people who used to have voice when there was town meeting. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that we need to make sure that we're bringing people together. So it's consistent with the charter's yes. intention to have transparency. Yes and civic engagement. Right. And there's no fixed hard deadline for getting this done. The important thing is to get it done right. Well, we don't want to take years. <laughs> we, we made our own deadline. You made, no, but you yeah. made the deadline for your committee. Right, yeah, and that's but the fall. But getting yeah. this right but is I important because it's going to stand for a very, very, very long time. Right, but I also think that if, if we're going to have our work done yeah. and do the initial presentation and then the council is going to look at that, and figure out what they want to look at and then bring it hopefully bring in these work sessions because mm -hmm. I think Alyssa's right about yeah. that that yeah. then we could be moving from fall 2019 yeah, yeah. through spring 2020 and maybe have it done I'm not sure whether every legislative piece I don't yeah. I don't even know what those would be right now mm -hmm. I'd like to punctuate what she yeah, said is good. we're not really working toward a finished product mm -hmm. our committee will have a product to deliver to the mm -hmm. council the council will have a product that it will further produce mm -hmm. into something else. Mm -hmm. uh, years ago, I drafted a small piece uh, for the attorney general on how to draft bylaws. And one of the things that I said a town or a city ought to do before ordinances or bylaws is, is to have it run by the people that are mainly affected by it. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a bylaw, for example, that is going to come down in its application, uh, and negatively or positively or shock the class of people, get the inputs from those That's people right. because you don't bring those to the table. Right. They have to be brought by the people who are affected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the follow-up that, that, that Pat has described the council's intention to be is exactly the implementation of that recommendation that well, I made years ago. Well, so what I get out of this Elizabeth. is that yeah. your committee is working on um, improving the clarity, consistency, et cetera, of the of our bylaws. You're also identifying places where current life may be in conflict with mm -hmm. what those bylaws say. And you may be recommend making some recommendations for how to fix some of those. And in other cases, you may just be pointing out that there may be a need to take a look at it. Right. Then once it goes to the town council, the town council has to decide by what process they will take the questions that have been raised because presumably most people are going to be comfortable with the consistency yeah. and clarity of it. Mm -hmm. It's the question of 
where there may be some policy tweaks or even changes mm -hmm. beyond a tweak, meaning a significant change, mm -hmm. and what's the process going to be for doing that. And, um, and again, this is an unusual process be in, in, be, because you don't mm -hmm. normally sit down and look at your bylaws going all the way back right. to right. try to determine if they're still relevant. Right. And so this is a really interesting right. exercise. Uh, yeah. both in providing clarity and consistency, which is so important for people to understand the rules. I think legislative flexibility of the council is a tremendous asset. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it, it demonstrates the kind of uh, facile movements possible under our new form of governance mm -hmm. than the old. So if there is a problem that we discern going forward, these are remediable in short term right. rather than long term. So having that kind of mm -hmm. plan for the follow-up is, is, I think, the essential uh, icing on the cake. And also and when those you should probably be part of the recommendations. Yeah. I mean, we have to do that as a group yeah. that we bring to exactly. the council. Exactly. So yeah. even if this ends up taking 18 months of the first uh, yep. two years of the council, it is an exercise which is enormously powerful, and you will have a foundation that's totally up-to-date and modern. It may take you a little while beyond those 18 months to actually act on all of those recommendations you may decide, but you'll pick up a lot right. of it in that That's first right. 18 months. Yeah. But when this exercise is complete, you will have a modernized set of bylaws. Right. All of the values and decisions will be consistent with current day life and practice. Mm -hmm. And if you follow what Bob's saying going forward, every time we write a new bylaw to make sure it's consistent That's right. with the existing set of bylaws so you don't fall into disrepair again right. or out of date again, this will carry on for years and years and years right. and years. This foundation that That's you're right. laying right. will right. carry on and, and you'll build right. on that for decades. Right. And, and I think as follow-up, when we are creating new bylaws, it, they will go to governance organization and legislative committee to look at clarity, mm. consistency, and actionability. Mm. Um, and we That's do that great. for committee charges, but and we will be doing and it since for you will have studied this carefully, and and two of you will have served on right. the committee going forward, you'll be able to provide a lot of guidance right. to the council to make sure when you present something, this is consistent with our right. revised bylaws. Well. Right. This has been a really fascinating conversation. I'm, I'm really grateful you guys came in to help us understand uh, what you're doing and, and the importance of it, because this is really significant work. It, sound, it sounds like a big yawn, but it really isn't. It's a lot of fun, Stan. It really, it really isn't. Is. So come to the meet yeah. next meeting. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> Thursday, I think. Well, listen, thank you very much for joining yeah. us. And uh, uh, you can participate, show up at their meetings, uh, watch for the opportunities that may be provided as follow-on for how you can engage in this process of updating and modernizing based on the recommendations of their committee as the town council considers their work. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.